Hello and welcome back. My name's Jeff, Jeff and today we are playing more RL Craft. Um, this is a direct continuation from my 100 days uh, survival series, so it has the same rules. Um, every 20 days I get a checkpoint. If I die, I lose 20 days worth of progress or a maximum of 20 days. No summoning rod whatsoever because I feel like it makes all the fights feel basically the exact same. And uh, no exploits, no infinite experience loops, anything like that. Um, so with that said, uh, we are setting out uh, in search of new lands and other stuff, which isn't as sketchy as it sounds because I still have that potion of recall to um, get me out of any tight spots I find myself in. So I still got a bit of a safety net. I'm not being too, too crazy. I, I kind of wandered around here just to make sure I didn't miss anything in Medusa's temple. But um, yeah, no. So I don't know exactly where I'm going, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is the journey, and that we don't die during it. Our first stop is the Wizard's Tower, which we've seen several times. I decided to just break in through the back wall so I don't have to deal with the um, lava pool at the front that has uh, the scary monsters in it all the time, who's still hanging out there. But um, yeah, the Wizard's Tower has gold blocks, it has torches, it has a bunch of redstone in like every little column it has redstone, and it has free iron, Free more gold and diamond and this skeleton right here is basically the only thing I found in the entire tower to uh, fight me so yeah it's just a bunch of stuff free for the taking I loot everything right down to the torches off the wall the morning of day 102 I found this guy blocking my way so I decided to just break down this wall over here and return all of my totally fairly acquired goods back to my village for safekeeping. With all of our newly acquired goods, we set off once more in search of new lands and horizons. We'll see how that goes for us. Later on day 102, we find a mine not far from our base, and the chests actually have a bunch of medical supplies on them, like bandages, plaster, um, like some kind of morphine thing. And uh, it actually turns night while we're looting the uh, while we're looting the mine. So we just toss down our bed and uh wake up bright and early for day 103 on day 103 while wandering aimlessly i get attacked by a purple flaming zombie in enchanted leather armor uh normally special mobs um terrify me and i try and stay away from them but apparently he was not special enough to uh even have a name related to him so i wasn't super worried about it i think they actually need to have like a name pop up at the top of the screen to uh have those special effects I also saw that frost dragon in the distance and decided to give him a healthy amount of distance. So yeah, I go the complete other way. The morning of day 104, I find an ice village. I find quite a few of these in the area, but they all tend to have the same thing going for them where they all trade sapphires for everything. And I didn't manage to find a waystone anywhere. I thought there was supposed to be a waystone for every village, but maybe that's not the case. Later that day, I found a snow pyramid. I had the inclination to take the stairs up in it. However, I declined to notice that the stairs also went down. So I missed whatever was down there. But the real gem of it was I missed this sapphire block right here at the front. So, you know... Three strikes on that one. Afterwards, I got really lucky while finding this above ground castle. Because typically these things are loaded with uh, monsters and whatnot, just wandering around causing problems. However, when I went into the tower, something weird happened. They just weren't spawning. I'm assuming it's because there's a layer of snow on top of it. So I just got to smash these spawners for free and get all of the loot, including like six heart shards. So yeah, this place was absolutely fantastic to me. Up until they started working over in these towers, and then I booked it. On day 105, I found another wizard's tower, and without any lava monsters around, I immediately set about looting the place from the resources to the torches on the wall. However, this one had a little bit more of a, shall we say, defense mechanism than the other. This tower had a spider boy just sort of chilling out. He dropped in and paid me a visit. He wasn't too much though, but I was very worried that there might be more of him just kind of hanging around, so I got out of there just as quickly as I could before they strung me up. Oh, I also found this creeper. Mm. On day 106, I found a fish out of water. It's a pretty big fish. I decided to take a couple shots at him just, you know, for the novelty of it, I guess. Um, didn't do much except piss him off, so I, uh, I kind of got out of there before he destroyed me and everything I ever know and love. Look at that. He is swimming across land. Literally. Later that day, I managed to find myself in quite a pickle. 
There's two t sea serpents right over here, apparently just murdering things and flopping around for funsy like the fish they are. And above me, there's a dragon just hanging out by his nest. What are the odds I have a land-faring sea serpent, another sea serpent doing somersault, and an actual dragon all on the same island? I nope out of there just as soon as I start actually noticing what's going on, because I've only seen the sea serpent so far. Now surrounded by two sea serpents and a dragon, I decide enough is enough and decide to push my panic button. Unfortunately, I forgot how recall potions work. They don't take you back to a waystone, they take you back to the last bed you slept in. And if you broke the last bed you slept in, it doesn't know where to put you, so it just kind of plops you somewhere random. However, this actually worked out really well for me, because I ended up with a stellar freaking woodland snow tundra mansion thing. And yeah, it's got some good stuff in it. While looting the mansion, I searched these chests that were hidden in the corner above the stairwell, and in those chests, I found 11 Umbrium ingots, which, as far as I'm aware, are even better than diamond, so I was pretty stoked about that. But more importantly, in this chest over here, I found the cat CD. I stored my new priceless treasures and I decided this place is my new home. Even if there's not, you know, any convenient way back to, you know, my proper home. That's a problem for future me. So if the Umbrium ingots and the cat's disc weren't enough, um, on day 107 I also found this dead dragon just hanging out in my backyard. This mansion was a spectacular find for me. While exploring, I realized I was pretty much entirely out of arrows, so I was on the run once again, and uh, this little friend just roasted me alive. Eh, it's not as bad as it looks. On day 109, I found another dead dragon skeleton. Well, I figure most dragon skeletons are dead, um, unless they're rather terrifying, but uh, it did slightly concern me what is killing all of these dead dragon skeletons. Hmm. On day 110, I remembered ammo. On day 111, I found a third freaking dragon skeleton. I have no idea what is going up with this tundra, but up until it kills me, I am absolutely loving it. Immediately after looting the third dragon, I find a group of frost monsters and I decide to test my luck against them. And surprisingly, it actually goes really well. I, uh, I am a true professional. professional. On day 112, I finally find another town with a waystone so I can return home, because otherwise I had no way to get home. And perhaps more importantly, I find sheep. Sheep that I can shear for wool that I really don't need anymore because I've done like most of my trading and all of that. But it's still just really satisfying to finally find them after all that time. I quickly realized that this new town is actually extremely hot, which is nice because during the winter I can run here and um, not freeze to death, but it also means I have to constantly jump in pools of water or carry a bucket of water around with me to do anything without burning to death. But I've been in worse situations, like the entire first hundred days. On day 113, I built a hillbilly hot tub and I built a pen for my sheep. Not too much to it. On day 114, I got some materials to uh, build the roof of my sheep pen. I also went around looking for various points of interest and there's surprisingly few things in this area that want to kill me. I'm sure I'm gonna regret saying that, but for now, it's peachy. On day 115, it was back to my real home to uh, gather some supplies and to prepare for our next adventure. The first part of gathering supplies involved visiting KFC for some snacks. First thing on day 116, I was still cooking. I was gonna need a lot of snacks for what I had in mind. The evening of day 116 was lit. I also found this gentleman with shinier pants than me. There can be only one. And suddenly I made a new friend. And suddenly an iron golem killed my new friend. He was my friend. So yes, the whole reason I'm running around at night where everything is dark and scary and full of Loch Ness monsters is I'm hoping to get a new bird friend. Um, unfortunately the Aegises have not made that easy because they keep murdering all my new friends. Quite rude. And finally on the morning of the 117th day, I get a bird who is smart enough to not fly into chainsaws. Hmm. I don't ask for much. And I searched the 20 different chests I used to keep all my stuff in until I remembered I left all my pet stuff in my winter mansion. But look at him! Look at him! I'm actually suffocating because I decided to ride a bird inside. That's not a great place to fly, kids. But uh, 
I'm still going for it. On the 118th, I get bored of being productive, so I decided to start selling some snow to uh, people who live in a frozen tundra. Don't know why they want it, but I'm not complaining. Then I let one of the uh, tribesmen, Tom Sawyer, me into doing his fishing for him. But I guess I get a couple sapphire out of it, so it ain't too bad. After I'm done fishing, I fly around and enjoy just not having to walk places. Like, after 117 days of walking everywhere, this is just fabulous. Absolutely, 10 out of 10, would recommend. With the new friend under our wings, we return to doing chores on day 119, and hopefully we'll actually be able to use all those dragon bones we found, but we need hundreds more levels of experience, so uh, yeah, that's gonna take a minute. On day 120, we start training up our librarians. We don't get any good enchantments from any of them, so we might have to start replacing them. Hmm. We also found a nice new pet kitty. He seemed pretty grouchy and started mauling the villagers, so we put him down for a nap. And we are plucking right along with day 121. Day 122 is spent amongst the plebeians collecting our taxes from them. They really should have known better than to have been born peasants. <laughs> On day 123, I decided to imprison some villagers at my vacation home in case some sort of event were to wipe them all out. On day 124, some sort of event started wiping out all my villagers. These guys are clanks, or clinks, or something like that, and they hit very hard. I did try fighting some of them, but um, they kicked the ever-loving snot out of me. Uh, so yeah, I lost all my villagers except the, uh, except the ones I hid inside the houses and whatnot. Ooh, I did not see this guy. Look at him. He's like a Bulbasaur. He's like, oh my gosh, I, oh, I wish I could have caught him. He's so cute. On day 125, we start repopulating the village. It's best not to ask questions. On day 126, I generously built some dirt huts for my villagers, and now they can live the same life of luxury I do. Nothing interesting happened on day 127, so look at this dinosaur who's been trapped since I moved into my vacation home. Quality content. On day 128, I finally got around to using all those enchant books I found and uh, started enchanting all my gear. Well, some of it, not all of it, because I am planning to replace a lot of it soon. My bow explodes now, so that's a thing. Day 129 is a return to the farming simulator that has become my life. Although it is extremely satisfying to watch an entire field of crop just get mowed down and turn into sweet, sweet profits. On day 130, I start what is probably my biggest waste of time yet, a giant pumpkin patch. I don't know why I felt the need for a giant pumpkin patch, but I did, and therefore I shall. Days 131 through 134 were spent on the great pumpkin patch. And yes, I spent four days on something I should not have spent one on. Bite me. Day 135 was all about trading, but I also got ambushed by like three different banshees, which feels like significantly bad luck to me. But oh well. Oh, and there's another one. On day 136, I supported my local library, and it supported me back. This glorious librarian right here sold me Advanced Mending 5. Which, for y'all who don't know, is extremely rare and valuable, so that's pretty freaking sick. Now I just need to get some tools and armor worth putting it on. On day 137, me and Rocky decide to take on the most dreaded nemesis we've faced yet. The dreaded Battle Tower Golem. And we sort of just shoot him until he dies. Like, yeah, we're out of his range, so he actually cannot do anything to us. A legendary battle indeed. Now at this point, towers like to explode and apparently spawn air jingu. So, um, that's a thing. So I managed to do a little sky dance with the air jingu. And after running away for a moment, I do manage to kill them and I start collecting all of this valuable loot. Um, and thanks to the tower exploding, all the mobs exploded too. So all these diamonds, all of this treasure, it's just free for the taken. I also found uh, a couple of baubles, including a tool belt, um, which, you know, is better than nothing. Day 138, and I'm back to picking up all the drop treasure at the tower. I don't plan to do too many towers like this because that was really easy and really cheap. Like, literally, there is nothing the battle golem could have done to stop me. So I will not make a habit of that. Pinky promise. Some say on day 139, my heart grew one sizes. On day 140, my crops were starting to farm me, 
but I still had a few more levels to get before I could use dragon items, so it was worth it. Chicken in on day 141, and we start building our first semi-automatic farm. Um, it doesn't go super great. We have a small prison break at some point, and I end up not uh, working on it here. But I'm looking on uh, building a um, entity cramming uh, chicken farm which uh, will hopefully, I don't think it'll actually do much for me. It's just been like 141 days and I haven't built a farm yet. Like that is unheard of. On day 142, I do the normal Banshee dance. However, uh, this time when I kill the Banshee, I get a notification saying there are chaotic forces uh, working because of my destructive influence on the elements. So I spend a good little while panicking. I have seen things explode violently after getting that message. So I spent some time freaking out next to the teleporter and when nothing exploded, I just decided to uh, disregard it after like a while of panicking. Mm. So I'm not 100% sure it's related, but I think the destructive energy causes more enemies to spawn. Cause I had two banshees, that reaper and that geist plus that dark fire all, you know, just come after me after that destructive force. It was an interesting day. By day 143, my chicken coop had turned out most excellent. Day 144, I finally set about collecting some profits for my sheep. You know, those profits I really needed on, you know, day 1, or 10, or 30, that are now completely useless to me. Mmm, not that I'm better. It was day 145. Winter was coming. I considered alternative sources of food. On day 146, I set about exploring some of the surrounding area. This is that graveyard that I had passed through several times before. There's nothing interesting in here, but you know, it's nice to uh, make sure no stone is left unturned. It does look pretty neat though. On day 147, the exploration continues and I go over to my local world tree. As far as I can tell, there's nothing worthwhile over here. But there is a plethora of mobs that just hang out underneath this tree. Later that day, I find the babiest of battle towers. Um, I say that because all it has are these basic spawners, which for some reason barely spawn anything. Like normally they churn out mobs like crazy, but this one took its sweet time about throwing anything at me. And in exchange for conquering this super easy battle tower, I got a bunch of heart dust, I got heart shards, I got diamonds which one of which fell down here, so I have to uh, start moving quicker than I want. Um, but yeah, I roll through this entire battle tower in like no time flat. There is really no threat here and a whole lot of good, good loot. Basically all of day 148 is spent organizing all the sweet loot I just got. Isn't it fun looking at me look at things? I think so. On day 149, I started gathering some resources in the hopes of building a house. Gathering resources in RL craft can be quite time consuming and annoying, and especially when buildings tend to get destroyed by various mobs. So I end up continuing to procrastinate on this project, but I do get a whole bunch of stone, which I guess is useful. On day 150, I start playing my second favorite game, Logging Simulator. I cut down the entire northeastern forest, and it is worth mentioning, I have no idea which direction is north or east. And I turn all the wood into charcoal. Take that, climate. On the 150th night, I got a nice little surprise, in the form of a rock teddy bear coming out and smacking me in the face. Luckily these guys are pretty easy to fight, they just scared the ever loving crap out of me every time I see one. On day 151, I find another battle tower chock full of experience, heart dust, and all that good good loot. Um, I don't find anything super exciting here other than like more diamonds, more iron, I don't find any baubles or anything along those lines, but I do find some easy to smash spawners that give me a bunch of levels and get me much closer to using my dragon items. It's worth mentioning I don't take out the tower in one shot because they do have blazes and in this case a rare shadowkin blaze of stalking. Yeah, I want nothing to do with that. On day 152, apparently my Minecraft skin loses its werewolf form and becomes a very anime-esque human and I'm also carrying a tool belt for some reason. I do own a tool belt, but I never took it off, so I don't know why all of this is happening. At this point, I'm tired of playing things safe, and I decided to dive headlong into the dungeon and just face it head on, which is one of the sillier decisions I've made. And then I get ambushed by a very dangerous mob, the Trumpeteer. And everything explodes. And I'm very lucky I am wearing diamond armor and holding a diamond shield, otherwise I would be dead. So I hide, heal up, and then I run away from this dungeon before it murders me and 
all of those cave spiders find a way to get at me. On day 153, I decide cheese is the better part of valor, and I decide to just dump lava all over my problems. Um, I do end up losing some loot to it falling into the lava, but the experience is really what I'm after anyways, so it's not much of a loss. On day 154, it was too cold to do anything else, so I went to mining. And then, I happened upon some strange blocks. Um, my better instinct told me to run away as fast as I could, but my curiosity got the best of me. At this point, I could see a well-lit room, I could hear enemy noises, and I could see some of the name tags through the walls, you know, the uh, ones that hang above boss enemy heads. So I was very anxiously poking around. But despite all this, I still decided to continue forwards. Um, very bravely and courageously, as you can see, but it's kept me alive thus far. I went and I checked both windows, and then I took a very quick peek out the door. When I looked out the door, I saw zombies. Zombies don't scare me too much. And I did not see that Gru up there. That's going to be important in like two... There he is! Um, and at first I panicked, but then I realized he's not that scary of an enemy. He's actually pretty easy to kill because I have full diamond. Um, and more importantly, he dropped something I need. A Gru Claw. I poked my head out the door once again, hoping to attract the attention of the other Gru. And suddenly I get face hugged. This thing scared the ever-loving crap out of me. Yeah, no, spiders are not my friends. Luckily, I had a ton of healing materials on me, so I was able to back off and just heal up. I did manage to attract a specter, but luckily, it was too big to actually see me. I think it might be able to phase through objects, but it doesn't matter. I just safe spotted it with a diamond axe. And I got my second Gru. And after a quick, pretty easy fight, the Gru is, wait for it, dead. And I found a Gru Claw. So now I have everything I need to make a fancy schmancy custom weapon. So this is actually going to be a freaking game changer right here. Although it is still the dead of winter, so it's actually too cold to, for me to go and get my other ingredients. So I kind of have to wait for winter to pass before I can actually do anything with any of this stuff. On day 155, I became one with the sheep. In my all wool armor, I was amongst them and they trusted me. And so I got more wool so I could make more sheep. And the cycle continues. On day 156, a Veneraptor came along to get revenge on me for my KFC factory. He was justified in all fairness, but I still had to kill him. On day 157, I was selling a sheep ton of string, and I was making experience hand over fist. Also emeralds, but I really don't need many more of those. On day 158, I finally had enough magic to build an infuser. I'm getting closer and closer to having a proper custom weapon. On day 159, I went back to my real home and I realized I don't have enough shadow or frost charges for my custom weapon. I'm getting further and further away from a custom weapon. On day 160, while doing chores, I found true love. Aww. On day 161, I found a cute little family farm struggling to make ends meet. And so I spent the next few days ruthlessly looting everything it has to offer. Uh, through harvesting all of the grain and wheat and such, I did manage to finally make it to 24 attack. So I finally have enough attack levels to use my dragon weapons. I still don't have enough agility though, or defense for armor, so still got a ways to go on that front. On day 162, the villagers watched as I looted all their harvest for the year. Um, also funny enough, there is not a single farmer in this entire area. So not a single farmer was responsible for this entire, I guess, not a farm. Hmm. Day 163 was just more farming, but on day 164, I found a new village, and I decided to tactically advance in another direction, once I saw the fire-spitting dragon looking right at me. He destroyed basically the entire forest uh, in the vague direction of where I was going, and you can tell there's so much fire, it is lagging my game. Uh, but I did get away from him safely. I spent the next two days selling my hard stolen goods. You can see the judgment in their eyes, but at this point, they should really know what I'm all about. On day 167, I went and explored a mysterious dungeon. And, for a moment, I forgot I was in RL craft, because I found this mysterious lever, and I just ran up and I pulled it. Luckily, it didn't explode, um, which is pretty rare for RL craft, but later I found out what it actually did. 
and it started a beautiful fireworks show in my honor. Thank you, thank you, I know, I know. Further in the dungeon, I considered renaming Rocky to Caboose because he did his level best to team kill me as I tackled the skeleton spawner. He also tried suffocating me and carrying the skeleton so it had a better angle to shoot me in the face with. He does this more than once, and for some reason I never think to just leave him at home. On day 168, me and Rocky took a chill pill. Sub-Zero, freeze in fear. The Reavers this spawn aren't actually that dangerous, and so I was able to basically just farm them for frost charges, and that way I can finally build up my Wendigo antler and maybe someday get a custom weapon. So yeah, this was actually very profitable for me. I also got a pike component from killing them. So yeah, overall, a huge win. On day 169, we're right back in the dungeon, and Rocky decides once again to give Team Kill and the old college try. He really gives it a good go this time. And there it is, I cannot see anything at all, and now I'm choking on the ceiling as I'm getting shot and ambushed by a chupacabra. And another skeleton. And then I run deeper to try and get away from all this stuff, and... Yeah. He's still carrying a skeleton to shoot me in the face with. Who needs enemies when you have friends like freaking Rocky over here? The morning of day 170, I'm still in the dungeon, getting mediocre loot and killing a bunch of mobs, when all of a sudden, an ultra decaying skeleton of smashing comes out. He has berserk, rust, ender, darkness, and lifesteal. So I bravely, bravely run away. And as I'm bravely running away, or tactically advancing in another direction, I have this guy waiting to eat my face off. Although for once, Rocky does make himself useful and actually helps me out. See, he's not totally useless, just mostly useless. Back safely and soundly in my home, I get attacked by a Faradon. Usually they aren't that scary, but this one gave me a run for my money. Although Rocky was really holding his own and pulling his weight, which was a great surprise to me. However, Xavier over here, seeing the vicious lion attacking me, decides to murder Rocky instead, because why not? On day 171, I fought an Enderman. And apparently, fighting an Enderman looks like this in RL Craft. So, yeah, I never went back into that dungeon. And Rocky actually saved my life to make up for all the many, many times he tried to kill me. On day 172, we are back to nice, normal, safe chores. I mean, relatively safe. On day 173, I was seriously getting tired of winter, especially because I found out winter gifts only apply when it's winter in real life. So yeah, I can't abuse that anymore. On day 174, I decided to take my frustrations out on someone who is much, much smaller than I am, and who also had a very predictable attack pattern. I got nothing for this one. Sometimes cute fluffy things just get chopped up with an axe. At least we know there is no possible way we could have prevented this. I spent the next several days fishing in order to forget the tragedy of what happened with my dear dear sheep. On day 178, we found a whole nother village along with another waystone nearby. We even found another house with the exploding chest built into it. But this time, I knew what I was going into, and I managed to not blow myself up in the process. After looting the living, we set about looting the dead, and we harvest as many resources as we can from this zombie hole here. We get a number of heart shards, heart dust, diamonds, and whatever else you can imagine. And all we had to do was desecrate graves. On day 179, we set about conquering another battle tower, although this one was pretty big and chock full of elites, so we actually had to run away several times. Seriously, this battle tower, the entire time I was in there, it felt like a zombie apocalypse, as just hordes and hordes of zombies and skeletons and other mobs just poured after me. Sometimes, while well, they were all on fire but they were almost always mixed in with at least one elite who could cause some serious problems. So, I did what I always do, and I ran away. On day 180, we play some more Left 4 Dead. However, we also get a heart container and a bezoar for our trouble. A bezoar prevents poisoning, so now cave spiders just went from being our greatest threat to, like, really not scary at all. So, yeah, we are clear to wipe out this whole dungeon. And when I say we're clear to clear out the rest of the dungeon, this is what I mean. This is at 6 times speed. Yeah, I spent 
like an entire two more full days wiping out this dungeon just because these stairs get clogged over and over again and I run into elites, I run into freaking wave after wave of zombies this guy right here casts darkness on me and every so often they spit fire at me one of them had a wither skull which was nice but yeah there's really no reward and I get lit on fire and attacked by all sorts of crazy stuff all the time but I did get a lot of valuable stuff from this dungeon, so I can't complain that much. But yeah, this is nowhere near over. On day 183, I took a break from the monster slaying, and I went exploring. And by went exploring, I mean I got totally lost. I found this neat thing, though. Don't know what it does, but it looks cool. I also ran into a dragon, and another one, and another one. If you count Marox... That's like six more over there. And on day 184, I found this massive, beautiful city. Another one. Jokes aside, this city is horribly laggy and you're not watching like actual stutters right now. This is actually me running into invisible walls and glitches that I can't get around. Um, so yeah, the city is not actually the best place in the world, mostly just because everything breaks around it. And it almost always has a dragon attacking it. Hmm. Oh, and if you needed another reason to avoid the city, if you can hear that little bit of howling in the distance. Yeah, that doesn't stop. The entire time I'm in the city, I hear howling over and over and over again. I actually didn't notice this guy while I was running around. He's on the outside of the city wall, but um, another one. <laughs> And another one. Last one, I probably promise. We both knew I was lying about that. Although, can we seriously real talk about the number of dragons in this game? Because it's honestly absurd. You can't fly for like 30 seconds without running into one. On day 186, I found another village and a way home. For the record, I cut about 12 more dragons out of that little montage, so yeah. After restocking at home, I declared war with the great spaghetti noodle of death. Truly, it was an epic battle. A war of unparalleled ferocity. I even managed to fell one of the great beasts of the sky. Decked out in our new sea serpent armor, we went through and slaughtered a battle tower for some easy experience. These battle towers don't really pose much of a threat unless we get a really bad elite nowadays. There were still quite a few mooks left in the tower, and I got tired of dealing with them the right way, so I started just dumping lava on all of them. It really helps deal with these pesky elites too. I spent day 191 and 192 doing chores, and finally building a custom weapon. Not for its damage output or its special effects but to use as a very effective shovel. On day 193, we're back to full-on landfill projects, our most favorite part of our Elcraft. By day 194, the land is filled and the stage is set. On day 195, we set off to poke a very explosive bear. Thankfully, he had this nice soft tree to land on so he didn't kill himself with the fall, and he did us the favor of knocking out the wall of the tower so we could pull him over the edge. Now it's just a matter of clearing a path to get him back home. The beginning is by far the hardest part, since I'm stuck in a pool of water, and I don't have a whole lot of room to maneuver while he's just, uh, hanging out chasing me with explosives. I do get, get sort of cornered, um, but my armor is tanky enough that I can handle quite a few shots from him and his minions. After the initial wave, I alternate between dragging him through water and punching him in the face to lure him over land. It goes pretty well. I do occasionally have to carve out some canyons to get him where I want him, but he moves not the slowest I've ever seen. On day 196, I was distracted trying to capture a water noodle. I didn't achieve anything, and at some point it just sort of faded out of existence or something. I don't know where it went. I even tried poking my head under the water to take a look around, and it just sort of vanished. So yeah, that was a full day wasted. On day 197, I run into the slight hurdle of having to get the golem over a mountain. In order to make him reach the water on the other side, that will carry him the rest of the way home. It so happens that with my new super shovel, having a mountain in the way 
isn't much of an issue anymore. After that, it's as simple as fishing. He honestly didn't even kick up much of a fuss when I was putting him in his new home. I really thought he was going to cause troubles and blow the whole area up and I was going to have to do all sorts of finagling to get him in. But no, he just sat there. He just sat there and let me wall him in. And I finished my new exhibit with one day to spare. And Miss Medusa would be so happy to have some company, except she's still sort of locked in this house. I mean, you know, insta-kill and all that. And on the last day, I rested, chilling at home with my homies and organizing my atrocious inventory. Thank you all so much for joining me. My name's Jeff. I hope you join me next time, and I may or may not continue this series because they are updating our craft. So let me know in the comments if you want to see me go to 300 days on this version or to start over with the new version. Deuces!